So we have a grip and you want to grab the grip up the top because you want the leather on here so it doesn't hurt the bow. So if I was using my back quiver, which is this, it'd be on my back like that. So all your knocks at the end of the arrow have a flat spot and your string has a knock. So when we say knock your arrow, it means bring the two together and make it one. So I would pull it out, I scoop it on, and I just all I'm doing is rotating my thumb and my hand and grabbing my thumb. So it's kind of like an elephant with an eye. So when I do that, it doesn't fall off the bow. No matter what I do, it stays right there because I pressure this way and pressure this way. So when the lock is on and I grab and turn my wrist against it, and remove my thumb here. And then as you come down, you just pull apart. And what you want to do is have everything straight across. If you want to put your arm out and it's up here, you're off. Okay, when you shoot up here, you're really not accurate. So you want to be straight across. So when you come down, it's like the arm is part of the arrow and you pull it down, whoops, pull it down like that. And then you, as you pull back, I just press in because you're not pressing with your hand here. You're lifting your wrist up because that's what the pressure is and that goes to your target, the V of your hand. So when you pull, the V of your hand goes to the target. So basically that's it. So then you just grab your next arrow, come down, knock, lock, and shoot. All my galloping. All my galloping. Like that. So I learned a different way in the beginning, but I've, we've changed it because it's more powerful. So pretty much that's it. Um, you can have all sorts of different types of quivers, like I said. You can have, there's three or four different ways to shoot with your hand. That's how we learn. It's the Mongolian style. Yeah, and then practicing, you just desensitize your horse to the sound of the arrows to having the arrow hit a target. And once they're used to that, you can do that in a round pen. Um, then you can get on them and practice at a walk and then a trot. And there are walk, trot, canter um, clubs that hold it for younger students or anybody that doesn't want to gallop. They just want to do walk, trot. They have those and they can have competitions too. We don't actually have them here just because there's so many that come. We don't have room or time or days to do it. But as far as coming out the ranch and, and having a session, once they got the knocking down and they got learned to shoot with speed on the magic machine, they can bring their horse out for a lesson and we'll help desensitize them or they can do that at home and they can come and start practicing. That's great. So they can find you at DesertWarriors.com? It's, yes. Or .org? It's .com. It's DesertWarriors at SWMountedArchery.com. But if they just go on horse archery and see Desert Warriors, that's, you'll find us. Yeah. Yes. This is interesting. I really want to do this. <laughs> you're so generous with your time, and you're so passionate about your horses and, and about this archery that uh, I think it's very infectious. Yeah, but it's, yeah, I want to do that. we hope so. Most people, when they, try it out there and they get the knocking down they're excited and they get them walking because once they're walking they're not thinking as much as the, the muscle memory shoot practicing and they're just shooting and it's a little bit more exciting and then when they get on the magic machine they don't want to stop they want to and the nice thing about that is if it's hot here in the desert in the summer we don't work our horses to death we can do that all day long and it's fun and it's it's training and it's just it's a blast